Hey, thanks for tuning in. On this episode, I'm going to show you how I made this workbench out of pallet wood. Now let's start off with the measurements of this workbench. It's 42 inches long by 28 inches wide. Now on the front and right side of the bench, I left an inch and a half overhang. Now this gives me enough room for a clamp if I need to clamp something down to the bench. On the right side of the bench, I left flat. I did this so I can add on to it in the future if I wanted to. Now I ended up using 9 skids to build this workbench. The skids that I used measured 42 by 42 inches. After collecting enough skids for the project, the first thing I like to do is wet them down real good. The water really softens the wood up and makes it less brittle. Now let's move on to the not so fun part, disassembling the skids. What I like to do is turn the skid over and lift it off the ground by straddling two skids. As you can see here, I'm using a scrap piece of 2x4 and a sledgehammer to beat the slabs off the 2x4s. You want to hit the slabs as close to the 2x4s as possible. You don't want to hit in the center of the slab. Now to get the last two slabs on the end, I just hang them off the edge of the skid. The next step is getting all the nails out of the 2x4s. What I like to use for this is called a nail puller. Now for the nails left on the slabs, I like using a punch nailer. Now if you don't have one of these, you can always tap them out with a hammer. Now let's get started with building this workbench. The first thing that I did was laid out the eight pieces that I wanted to use for the top of my workbench. This gave me a 42 by 28 inch top. The lengths of the boards that I used for framing the top of the workbench were the back board 40 and a half inches, the two sides 26 and a half, the front 37 and a half, and the middle brace 23 and a half. I also left an inch and a half overhang on the front and one of the sides. Building the bench top frame base took five 2x4s. The first thing I did was measure and cut all the boards. Next I pre-drilled the holes and assembled it with screws. Here I'm marking the inch and a half overhang. That finishes the bench top frame. Next I'll be putting on the bench top. As you can see, once again I pre-drilled all my holes. After securing down the top, I gave it a quick sanding.
After the sanding was complete, I taped up all the seams on the bottom of it. After sealing the bottom with tape, I turned it over and filled all the cracks on top with glue. I used the sawdust to help fill in the cracks. After allowing the glue to dry, I once again gave it a quick sanding. Now the next thing I did was cut eight 2x4s at 35 and a half inches. I used these boards for the legs. This ended up giving me a workbench height of 37 inches. After cutting all the boards to length, I doubled up on the thickness of the legs by gluing and screwing two boards together. Once again, I made pilot holes before screwing the boards together. After screwing all the legs together, I gave them a quick sanding. Next, I drilled and bolted the four legs on.
After bolting on the legs, I now installed some lower leg braces. The two side braces I cut to 23 and a half and the front and back to 40 and a half. I drilled pilot holes and screwed on all the leg braces. Here I'm installing two boards onto the leg support. They were cut to 20 and a half inches long and they were also drilled and screwed in. With the leg support done, now I'm going to add a shelf to put on top of them. Here I'm notching out a piece so it fits around the leg. All these boards were 42 inches long and were the 3 quarter inch wide boards that were on top of the pallets. All the boards were once again drilled and screwed into place. And that completes the lower shelf. Now I'm going to work on some shelving on top of the workbench. I first installed three 2x4s that were 42 inches long. I drilled and bolted on one on each end of the back of the workbench and one in the middle. I next installed three 3 quarter inch slabs that were 42 inches long, starting from the bottom and working my way to the top of the shelving. Next I cut two 2x4s two to 28 inches long. I attached these just above the three slabs I just installed, putting one on each end. Then I cut three 2x4s to 7.5 inches long. I installed one on the right side one on the left side and the last one in the middle next I cut two three-quarter inch slabs to fit in between the three two-by-fours that I just installed then I screwed on two 3 quarter inch slabs to finish the first shelf.
Next, I screwed on three more of the three quarter inch slabs, followed by another three seven and a half inch long two by fours. Once again, I filled in between the three 2x4s with some 3 quarter inch slabs. I added another two pieces of 3 quarter inch slabs on top to finish the second shelf. Another three pieces of 3 quarter inch slabs, followed by another three pieces of 2x4s. This time I installed it an inch down from the top of the last 3 quarter inch slab I installed. I did this so it had a lip and nothing can fall off the top of the back of the shelf. And lastly I topped it off with another two pieces of three quarter inch slabs to finish the last shelf. And now I'm working on the last part of this workbench and that's installing a sliding drawer. First I cut and installed two 2x4s two on the side legs to support the drawer. Before installing them I attached some drawer slides on both sides. Next, I boxed out a drawer out of four pieces of three quarter inch slabs. After the framing of the drawer was done, I cut seven pieces of three quarter inch slabs and attached them to make the bottom of the drawer. With the bottom of the drawer completed, I installed the other half of the drawer slide on both sides of the drawer. After sliding in the drawer, I started working on the drawer face. This was made from a 3 quarter inch slab that was 5 inches wide. This gave me about a 3 quarter inch overhang around the entire drawer and it got screwed on to the front of it. And the last thing I did was rip the 3 quarter inch slab to an inch and a half wide. I cut this into three pieces one at 10 inches and two at two inches and I use this to make the handle. I glued a two inch piece on each end and screwed it on to the front of the drawer to finish the handle. And that's the end of this workbench build. If you have any questions on how something was built please leave it in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching this video. Please hit the subscribe and like button down below. Go over to Facebook and HuntWise and follow us. And until next time, take care of yourself.